Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer and reflection as we remember the servicemen and women who are stationed across the globe that continue to fight for our freedom and way of life and also those who have passed in our community over the past week. Call, please. Mr. McGough? Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Lascom? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third Order 3A, Agenda for the Redevelopment Authority's regular meeting held February 6, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Applications along with decisions rendered by the Zoning Hearing Board on Wednesday, February 13, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority's 2011 balance sheet for December 31, 2011. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Are there any clerk's notes? No, Mr. Joyce. Do any council members have announcements tonight? I have none. <clears throat> Councilwoman Evans will not be in attendance tonight as she is seriously ill. And Councilman McGough will not be attendance in tonight. They're in attendance tonight either. Um, and that's all. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Do we have the sign-in sheet, Ms. Marciano? I'm sorry. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Council, good evening. Good evening. As, as council knows, I I usually define myself as a messenger to you guys or a critic of you guys. Uh, I I know I must be a constant source of, of grief and, and aggravation for you. Standing up here, I sure made a lot of enemies. I, I've told people you can make enemies two ways. Walking your dog, is, my whole neighborhood seems to hate me for that. And standing up here, I don't, it, it just, it's getting, everybody used to like me when I stood up here. Now I've got a bunch of enemies. If I side with you, I get some people mad at me. When, when I say something adverse, I get people mad. So I, I, I know what you guys must be going through. Yeah. I know you, you must spend a lot of hours and, that, and time on things that none of us appreciate. And, and I'm on your side when, it, when a push comes to a shove. In, in yesterday's paper, uh, uh, Ben McCormick wrote a harsh criticism of counsel and Mr. Miller and uh, Mr. Courtright. And I think he had a good point, but I think he just over-exaggerated in his statements. Uh, and I think council, I don't see nothing wrong in council being, uh, using this podium to announce your intentions to run for an office. What, what Mr. McCormick failed to mention there's a handful of people running for office that seem to have a complete indifference to the city. I don't know why they're running. They don't come to council meetings, 
school board meetings, taxpayers, commissioners, anything to do with the city, I've, I've never seen any of them. You know, but they want an office all of a sudden. You know, the, there's just so many good speakers that stand up here with so many good suggestions like Mr. Bolas and, and Andy and Ozzy and Lee and Doug. And it seems like you, you just don't grasp them. It, it, it seems like uh, unless you think of it yourselves that our ideas are, are no good. I don't know. That's, that's just my... Uh, say so on it. I'll just make this short and sweet. When I was a little boy, my daddy would buy a Packard every year or two. And the, the Packard, the, 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 the owner of the Packard dealer named Jack Chamberlain, he was like a member of the family. I saw him so much. He would bring a car over to the house for my mother, my mother bought the car. My father didn't care if it was a convertible or a wagon or what it was. Mr. Chamberlain would bring a car over and my mom would say, yeah, that one. Where I'm going with all this, you, you have to go after sales sometimes. I read in the paper last week that Mr. Hesser's moving the Nissan dealer. The, the mayor or, or one of y'all, somebody should go see this man and stop this, or attempt to stop this. I've known Mr. Hesser for years, and he's, he's just a congenial person. That, that You can just walk into his office if he's there and speak to him. All these inducements to give developers who have done nothing but cheat us left and right on building permits, there's got to be something done to save this dealership from leaving the city. This is, this is really, that's why you can't make a budget. Please, I mean, just, somebody take some time and go see this man and see if you can keep him here somehow. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is Giovanni Piccolino. Good evening, Council. Giovanni Piccolino, one of the owners of Bona Pizza. My message is just simple. Good evening. Good evening. I know it's only February, but Easter will be five weeks away. And if you guys could kind of roll this message on here and there in the next few weeks, I'm not sure I'll be able to make it, but we're just having a free Easter brunch from 11 to 2, Easter Sunday at Bona Pizza. Again, if you guys could just roll that message. And also, the other thing I have is that uh, I've teamed up with a partner and Mr. Tom Moran, and we'll be opening up two new businesses at the end of the block on Lockwan Avenue at 534 Lockwan Avenue within the next two weeks, the corner store and express coffee shop. Just kind of ironic how they tried to throw me out of the block. Now I'm the only one opening up a business there. So that's my two positive messages for the city. Hopefully, we could all keep our heads up with this uh, city in crisis ordeal constantly going on. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. And Mr. Piccolino, thank you for the invitation and the tour of uh, the new business that you're opening and as well of, and for the pizza, the great pizza at Buana. And uh, wish you best of luck with the new business as well. Thank you. Our next speaker is Gerard Hatman. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Gerard Hatman from Lackawanna County's Community Relations Department. To begin this evening, the Lackawanna County Arm the annual Lackawanna County Armed Forces Day Parade will take place this coming spring on Saturday, May 18th, 2013, on the same parade route in downtown Scranton that's followed for many years now. Our department's working in conjunction with the Armed Forces Week Committee to try to build the parade and grow the parade, both in terms of spectators and also in terms of participating organizations, as much as we can. This is something we worked on last year as much as we could with the few months that we had available from the time our department started. This year we're trying to do a bigger, better, more comprehensive job in growing the parade as much as we can to pay tribute to our men and women in uniform and all of our veterans and associated personnel. We'd like to ask council, uh, not obviously at the moment, but as you go through your daily business, if you can recommend any 
community organizations, civic groups, um, anybody you know who's, there's a group in the city or in the region who may be interested in entering the parade to march, uh, to have some cars, uh, any type of, you know, representation, uh, would have to be a community group like a civic group, um, you know, a marching, some type of marching group like maybe a dance studio, something like that. But any community groups that you may know that want to participate. We've reached out to pretty much all the veterans groups, uh, school bands, and we've got a number of community partners involved, but there's always someone who may not be aware of it or that we may have missed or may not be aware of. Uh, the two numbers that they can contact on the Armed Forces Day Committee, uh, the first is <coughs> Sergeant First Class Tammy Maslowski, and that's 570-496-8908, and then Joe Sylvester at 570-961-2696. And as always, we thank council and everyone who is in attendance and who watches the meetings in helping us to develop the parade bigger and better. And every year, we aim for that goal. Uh, secondly, we have a letter on this, and we will leave it with council's office after the meeting. But the Lackawanna County Arts and Culture Department has their annual $500 municipal arts and culture grants available for application. And this is a program that provides municipalities with a stipend to provide free arts and culture programming in the community. Uh, there's a very simple process to apply, and there's no set deadline. The department just asks that you apply approximately three to four weeks before the programming would be held. So if it was a concert series just a few weeks before the concert start, or if it's an art exhibit, you know, maybe three or four weeks before the gallery opens. But there's a letter that details the process. It's pretty simple, and we'll leave that with your office um, at the conclusion of the meeting. And third, uh, just a note for Council and the taxpayers. The Lackawanna County Tax Claim Bureau will hold their annual judicial sale on 10 o'clock a.m. It's going to be this coming Monday, February 25th, at the Lackawanna County Courthouse. And there is a list of properties uh, that will be available on the county website at lackawannacounty.org. Uh, so that's all I have for this evening. And uh, thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank you thank very you. much. Yep. Our next speaker is Andy Sparaglia. Andy Sprague, Citizens Scranton Fellows Grantonians. Good evening. Good evening. I know we're in trouble financially. I'm not going to sit up there and browbeat you on it. I know what we got. I know what's going to happen. But you got to put more of, of an emphasis down there in Harrisburg. Our solution to where we are now is down in Harrisburg. You can only oppress the people so much. You can't keep looking for ways to increase revenue on the poor backs of the poor people that are here. That doesn't work too well. A lot of people are trying to get the heck out of Scranton. You got to get down to Harrisburg with our representatives. We're a two-way city. Maybe there's a possibility we can start charging for fire service or police protection or one of these things, just like we charge for picking up refuse. I mean, these nonprofits do pay electric, they pay sewer, okay? Of course, they have their own trash haulers, but they do pay for things that they use. But they don't pay for fire protection, and they don't pay for police protection. We have to be the great Santa Claus. The people in Scranton are actually Santa Claus to all the nonprofits. Something ought to be done. You just got to get down there and get our, re our representative down in Harrisburg and see what you can do. Maybe even you... Bro I know we got a very young legislator, Blake, and our two uh, re representatives are all first term. So hence, we're at a disadvantage down in Harrisburg. I know that. But common sense might prevail if you explain that all the cities are in the same boat. It's not only Scranton. Everyone is going down the tubes. And they're going to continue to go down the tubes unless some way has changed. We've got to make an effort down there, either to get the state to take over the schools, which would help us tremendously, or some way where we can charge the nonprofits for police or fire protection or both. I mean, we're, we're, you and I know there's a 40% increase coming. Do you want a 40% increase? I don't think you do. I don't think any of the city does. 
you got to try to head it off. That's selling the sewer authority with their liabilities and this, that, whatever. I don't think we're going to get that much out of it. I didn't take a look at the, the audit. I assume you studied the audit to get some idea of what the sewer authority is worth, how much they owe, how much their vehicles are, because it's all in the audit. Now, why you need to have somebody go out there and I guess maybe, maybe to push it, you have to say it was done by somebody competent. But the audit points everything out. Just look at what's in the audit and then figure on the liability for that 120 million that's coming up that could be split over 20 years or something like that. You gotta look at that and figure out what we can actually get by selling the sewer authority. And actually what would happen to the tax rate payers when a private entity gets in there. You know, of course, when they get in there, they'll be under the state, they become an authority. Not an authority, but uh, other words, you'd be like the PUC, I mean the PUC under the PUC, the Public Utility Commission, because they won't be no longer an authority. Somewhere along the line, we got to look at all these things and try to head off that 40% increase in taxation that's coming up. I don't know if you can, but you got to make an effort now because really, that month really fly by. We're already, almost into March already. And as far as the parking authority goes, you and I know it's a lost cause. Nobody would ever buy that parking authority. There's no way. It doesn't make sense. Why would you want to buy something that they can't even pay off their bonds? And their figures, I don't know where they got them from, but we're going to be more in debt with that parking authority. And nobody actually ever says, we still have a parking authority authority. I told you a long time ago, I would ask for their resignations. I would have went out there and said, get the heck out of there. What you did to the city is almost criminal. I don't know if it is criminal. You would have to look. But certainly it was incompetence. And to, add, and to keep an authority in there that's, uh, that's incompetent is ridiculous. You've got to make an action. I mean, uh, Mr. Joyce, I liked it when you told that guy from the business say, to retire. Of course, they're all Democrats, so you're not going to get too much on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ozzie Quinn. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ozzie Quinn. I'm with the Scranton Taxpayers Association, homeowner. May I give these to Jamie and she can hand them on? Thank you. First, I want to uh, send my uh, wishes to uh, Janet Evans for to get well. Janet worked very hard, has been worked very hard in my opinion, and she, she has taken the beating by the news media and taken for a lot of things that, that it's not her fault. It's, it's the Doherty administration's fault. She and the rest of the majority up here have tried to turn this thing around and it's, they're trying to turn it around on you. I feel, I feel very sorry for you and I feel sorry for Jana for all this stress that she's, that she's under. I want to say that I want to thank Mr. Rogan for coming from our, to our taxpayers meeting two weeks ago. Uh, we spoke on some v various issues in the city and Mr. Rogan did a very good job. And uh, that is being televised. If anybody out there that wants to look at the show, the taxpayers program, uh, go to e Google ECTV schedule, ECTV schedule, and you'll get the dates and times and you go see that show over, okay? That'll be planned for all February. Uh, you know, in 1968, the, the city in Dunmore ventured into that, the sewer authority, okay? Having forming a board of directors, voting the bond with Chase Bond, Chase Bond, and uh, then 1999, they had a management agreement with Anglin American, uh, who then the subsidiary of America Waters, a subsidiary, uh, took over the management, and uh, 1999 rather, 
then 2004, the city and the sewer authority bailed out of the agreement and they went before the court, Anglin, American, and they won the judgment and had a judgment put against the city for $8 million, which the city had to pay. Uh, Mayor Doherty went down to uh, Mr. Barrett at the sewer authority. Gene Barrett's a, long, a good, good friend of mine, a personal friend of mine in a way. And, I've known him for many, many years. He OECD, and, and uh, he, he's, he's done a lot of pub, good public service. Uh, however, he signed an agreement, which you have in front of you, with Mr. Doherty, and it's witnessed by one person. And it's a global agreement to uh, sell the sewer authority, okay, off, all right? And for $8 million, the sewer authority borrowed the $8 million from a bank, paid off the Dunmore uh, judgment, and paid off the city of Scranton judgment. And uh, we're left here holding the bag. They, he did not come to city council for any approval. Now the Home Rule Charter unequivocally says that in uh, section 502 that he has to come to the city council, uh, council for any ordinance of legislation or resolution. He uh, just uh, uh, unequivocally went down there and signed that agreement. Can you imagine that? Without anybody knowing it, you people did not even know that. Nobody knew to that on the city council. And he says, he says the only thing that the sewer authority, the city council has the power now, I give them the power to, uh, we have the power to appoint board members. So of course, he appoints the board members for your verifications, or seconds, okay? now. Come on, what do we have a home rule charter for? I would talk to Mr. Hughes because I think this here whole thing is, is uh, void, this whole, this whole agreement that's going on from day one. And if someone challenges, somebody with any money ever challenged in court, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, the PUC, when he did it, I called the PUC up and I asked them, what can be done? What's going on here? You know, he didn't go to city council. The PUC again said to me unequivocally, we have nothing to do with municipal authorities. It's not a public utility, the sewer authority. It's not a public utility. I read now where they have to get approval to sell it, okay? Now, I don't know where this is coming from. I, I guess it's factual or it wouldn't be printed, maybe. Uh, but the fact is that, uh, that I was told by the lawyer that the PUC says nothing to do, and they couldn't do nothing. They couldn't do anything with the, in regards to what Mr. Doherty did by taking, having, taking out a loan through the sewer authority for $8 million to, uh, to pay off that uh, judgment. I, think, I hope you people look into it and find out what's going on here, because it's a sham, it's a shame, it's deceptive, and it's put us in a very precarious situation for a further lawsuit in the city of Scranton. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is Dave Dobson. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton, chief Good troublemaker Good evening. at large. Uh, first of all, once again, I'd like to uh, express support for what Council has gotten done during this term. And I'd also like to uh, <coughs> try to influence everybody to run again as many can uh, hopefully we won't have a health issue or something involved there but uh, the job is only partially done and uh, if you can take it please do it because uh, who knows what you'll get next time and we missed the big uh, opportunity here uh, we should have uh, bargained with that mayor's race for a term of Two limit, two term limit. Uh, it just got passed. We always seem to have some kind of crisis going on here, but uh, none of us walk on water. There's good and bad in everybody, and I'm not talking about legislative side. I'm talking about administrative side. It's the power is too concentrated there, and. Uh, People run out of ideas or their ideas don't work and then it just gets to be enemies of the glorious revolution instead of, uh, you know, getting something done that, that needs to be done in the way it needs to be done. Uh, 
And once again, I'd like to call on a, uh, for a tax exempt, a commission on tax exempts. Uh, we really have to, uh, how many are too many? And I'll go to the bottom of my little note page here because Senator Blake is uh, looking up some type of, or pushing some type of, uh, uh, what is it, a, a constitutional amendment maybe to uh, ban towns from refusing tax exemptions. And now Scranton Times had an editorial the other day on this and it said 20%. Well, we're at 33 or 35%. How much is too much? And uh, it's just a shame, but it's gonna drain our tax base. And as you know, every year you people make up the budget if you take what we would be paid in taxes on tax exempts, and not all of them are nonprofits, uh, uh, we would definitely have, uh, have our budget hole filled. So we really need to uh, emphasize this and then to, uh, to lobby people like Senator Blake because I think it's getting a little wrong-sided there. And uh, I've been noticing in the courts when I walk Poochie, uh, TVs are no longer accepted by DPW by law. Computer screens are no longer accepted. Electronics are no longer accepted. And tires haven't been for a number of years and they're piling up in the courts. So if we could get somebody to start paying attention to that, maybe put a warning, <coughs> you know, make a list and send that this is not an acceptable solution to disposing of tires. And before they wind up on my lawn, I, I don't need them. <laughs> and uh, okay, now up in Crown Avenue, and I talked to people down the street now, three blocks at a local store, and there's a lot of animals being abandoned. And uh, maybe people put them out after they lose their apartment or they can't find a place for them to go. And there's a low cost neuter clinic, EPAA. They do it up at Griffin Pond Animal Shelter. It's $60 and the number is 570-994-5846. And I might note that the city seems to be spending a lot of money on this. So uh, please have your animal neutered. And then even if you did abandon the thing, which is the wrong thing to do, uh, in the first place, they won't be reproducing. Uh, and on uh, the sewer authority and the parking meters and so forth, I think no large deals for right now. Uh, have, have it appraised, have it audited, and let's get it straightened out. But that's, I, I didn't vote for anybody to go privatizing. Unfortunately, uh, Chris Kelly gets the Golden Parrot Award this week because once again, because Janet has to read off the proposals of the administration and these authorities, uh, somehow she's listed as a supporter of it. And I don't think that's the case. I haven't talked to her about it. And she probably has too many people to talk to in a week, uh, every week. But the point being that these were bad ideas to begin with, and they're not going to get any better. They're not going to get any better. We have, we just need to uh, stay the course, and taxes have to go up, and that's the way it is. And then it's time for everybody to wake up and get involved. And once again, another uh, uh, golden parrot for Harry Reid. He uh, didn't change the filibuster rules. One senator gets to dictate more power than the president. And we have uh, Chuck Hagel. I always liked him as a Republican, and I thought he'd make a great president, but a lot of people don't think so. So they're filibustering. We don't have a Secretary of Defense. We have NATO negotiations and all this week, but nothing's being done. So, bok bok, Harry. I'm just wild about Harry. <laughs> have a good night. Thank you. You too. Our next speaker is Doug Miller.
Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, Good evening. Before I get into my issues tonight, I just wanted to uh, take a brief moment just to uh, express my condolences to the family of uh, Miss Diane Marinchak, uh, West Scranton uh, teacher, uh, who passed away suddenly uh, over the last few days, and uh, certainly is going to be missed uh, in the West Side community. Uh, made a, a tremendous impact on the lives of many students through the years, and uh, she was quite instrumental in many community uh, engagements, particularly her. Uh, yearly cleanup efforts over at Fellows Park. Uh, she was never a teacher of mine, but over my four years at the high school, I did get to know her, and, and I did work with her on a few of these cleanups, and uh, uh, she truly will be missed, and uh, just uh, we can keep the family uh, in our prayers uh, tonight. Uh, moving on, uh, I wanted to ask tonight if we can get an update on the uh, Linden Street Bridge. I know that this has been ongoing for quite some time now. This is going back to when Mr. Brazil was still the head of DPW, and I know that uh, PennDOT and other officials were going to take a look at it, and I don't know if we have any uh, update at this point. I spoke to PennDOT, I believe it was two or three weeks ago, and the last update I had, they were just working out one or two last things regarding fiber optic cables that were underneath the bridge and with the railroad company as well, um, but they do expect the project to be finished before the end of the year. Um, I will follow up with them again next week. Okay, I appreciate it. It's my understanding that in the last few weeks, uh, it, the situation over there has gotten a little worse in, in terms of the condition of that bridge. And, uh, you know, I would hate to see us have another, uh, you know, Rockwell Avenue bridge situation on our hands where it's, it's tied up for quite some time and it interferes and, uh, with, with uh, people trying to commute daily. Mr. Uh, Miller. Yes. Are you referring to the West Lackawanna Avenue bridge? I'm sorry. Is still open? Yep. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. The West Lackawanna Avenue. Yes, I actually was yeah. over there the other day, and I took some new photographs. That section is, is just about ready to go down. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I follow apologize. Up on that too. Yeah, I, with I all assume the, with all the bridges the we have out in this town, it's hard to keep track. Of Luckily, them. Linden, no, if Linden went down, we'd be, yeah. we'd, us on West Side, we'd really have a tough, yeah. uh, tough commute. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, yeah. I know Mr. Rogan addressed it last week or the week before yeah. about Linden Street Bridge. That's why. Yeah. I, I no, thanks, uh, Jack, okay. for correcting me on that. Uh, in regards to the parking meter uh, issue that we have ongoing, uh, as I've been stating for the last few weeks, it's my only hope that a decision will be made that certainly uh, solves the issue once and for all. Um, you know, this morning's paper, we saw that uh, with projections, they're, they're projecting that we may be three, between three hundred and five hundred thousand dollars and $500,000 short in revenue. Um, and certainly we know that the outcome would be that the city would be on the hook for those payments. And, and that's something we're trying to avoid. And, and that, that's why I think we're looking at some sort of uh, innovative way uh, to generate new sources of revenue so that we avoid placing that burden on the taxpayers. You know, Mr. Spragley earlier tonight spoke about the potential of seeing a 40 percent tax increase. Well, if we don't come up with some sort of plan to generate revenue, I, I think you're looking at well beyond a 40 percent uh, tax increase, and that's certainly something that we don't want to have uh, to deal with. Uh, Mr. Ellman brought up a point tonight. Uh, you know, I normally don't address the criticism and things like that, but uh, there was, I guess, a letter to the editor I was made aware of yesterday, and it did refer to myself uh, campaigning, supposedly campaigning from the podium. Mr. Cor McCormick claimed that I campaigned from the podium and, and lay out my, uh, my agenda every week. Uh, anybody that knows me quite well knows that I've, I come to these meetings every week, and I've done so for close to 12 years now. Um, I'm not an individual that you only see here every four years around election time. Uh, I believe that would be the difference between myself and any other individual or any other candidate that may seek an office. I think it's pretty safe to say that of all the candidates that are running for, for office, whether it's council, school board, mayor, um, I've probably been coming to these meetings a lot longer than any of them. And uh, that's something I'm very proud of because it shows one thing, it shows a commitment to the city. And uh, not that I'm someone who campaigns every four years from the podium. I'm here every week. I'm in your face. I raise my issues and it's not a secret. So to Mr. McCormick, you know, when you want to make statements, uh, you know, talk factual information. You know, you see me here every week. You, you know, this podium's open. It's free speech. If you have an issue or concern, come on down. I don't believe I've ever seen you down here. Uh, so rather than, you know, focusing our, on our, our time on all the negative uh, energy, uh, maybe if we put that much effort into something positive, uh, we might be able to get something accomplished in the city. Rather than worrying about who's running for an office or who comes down, who speaks, Let's put all that effort into something productive so that we can move the city forward. We come here to, 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 to try to find solutions to move the city forward rather than coming down here being critical and, and, and you know, playing uh, personal attacks. I just think it's uh, irrelevant and it has no place in uh, what we're trying to do here. Uh, 
And you know, finally tonight, uh, it was stated uh, earlier this evening, you know, about the criticism that the councils faced, uh, whether it's in the media, uh, you know, the Scranton Times in particular, uh, you know, it's writers, Chris Kelly, the editorial board, you know, all the, the, the articles and the editorials that, that they've done recently uh, in regards to the decisions that this council has made, you know, maybe if they took a second to sit back and actually see how difficult these decisions are and what you've had to go through, you know, especially last summer when we had to go through the recovery plan and, and the budget process and all the obstacles that you faced, they'd see how difficult it truly is. You know, it's easy to sit back, as I've said, and, and sort of cheerlead from the bleachers and, and, and tell elected officials how they should run the city and, and, name, and name call and blame this one and blame that one. But, you know, take a look and see how difficult it really is and the situation the city faces. You know, it's, it's all well and easy to sit behind our computer screens and write our letters to, letters to the editor and, and blame this one and blame that one. But, like I said, come forward and put all that energy into something productive and that maybe if we put our, put our minds together, we can turn the city around because it's about cooperation and coming together. That's the only way you get things done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is Bob Bolas. Good evening, Council. Bob Bolas, Scranton. Good, Good evening. evening. Great to see Mrs. Evans not here. You know, I hope her, she has the speedy return. She's no, it's no fun without her being here. You know just takes the fun out of it uh, as you know we put a suggestion in that we're interested our group is interested in taking over the city meters and I'd like to pursue that if we're gonna do something about it then we may as well do it locally and then instead of giving it to somebody out of the area so I want to make that approach to council before you do something else with it we'd like to review the contract we'd like a copy of it and uh, I'd like to submit our own offer. I believe meters should be put all around the university, all around their commercial properties that they're leasing and renting out to students and people. Meters should be put there at the same rate that they want to put everywhere else in the city. There should be uh, no separation as to who's who and where they should be. That's all lost revenue on a daily basis since they've been taking a free ride. We should go after them with the Chick-fil-A and everything else inside. Those are commercial businesses. They shouldn't be exempt. The parking garages all throughout the city that we've been in litigation for God knows how many years, and yet nothing's come to fruition here. There's litigation. Why isn't it pursued? What's Paul Kelly doing? He wants to earn an extra fee. Go get our money on the parking meters and the parking garages, especially those that are owned by uh, the Naples uh, that we've never received a dime for. And yet he's tied us up with litigation. Now he wants to continue litigation. I don't know if anybody today watched the dust storm going across the interstate, across Dunmore and all from the landfill. That one was blowing, it was a dust cloud going across. Well, if you don't know anything about pollution, think about airborne carcinogens going through the air. And that's what we're breathing. That's our real health hazard. So I believe people, especially in Scranton Council, may want to send a letter to DEP and inquire about why we have to breathe what's coming from a landfill because of the height and the wind blowing across there. One only needed to look at it today to realize what I'm saying here could be serious health consequences for all of us. We don't need to have that. Us, our children, and their children for no reason. You know, the Scrant Times, I heard Mr. Miller uh, talk about something. Well, Mr. Miller doesn't know. I took it to litigation when I was a candidate. And we defeated the council that was here that was trying to prevent candidates from coming here and speak. And they lost. Every candidate, including Mr. McCormick, who wants to sit back and play with his computer or whatever, if he's got an issue and he knows how to make the city any better than it is or any worse, come here. It's a free speech. So don't think he could sit there and deny any candidate or any person from coming here and speaking out. We took it to court, Mr. McCormick, and we won. It's free speech for everyone, including yourself and any of those that want a quarterback from a bleacher. 
I think when you sit here and you listen about the meters and stuff, they should put a big dartboard behind you guys. Because nobody's had an accurate figure yet before the three judges, before anybody. And throw a dart, see what we come up with, because it's the best estimation of where we are financially. So let's just play darts next council meeting. I think we'll get more out of that than we will with all the hypotheticals that we're shooting around the place. Scran needs a forensic audit once and for all and know where you're going because we're in the dark, we're blind alleyed, we don't know what we want to sell, what we want to do next because we have no clue. And we need to get a clue, we need to know where we're going and then make intelligent decisions. So far we haven't made a single one that's intelligent. Now it's the sewer authority. It's this, it's that. I think before we put City Hall off for sale, we should fix the lights in here. We'll get a heck of a lot better price than you can see in here. You know, you see Mr. Volpe, there's another guy. He wants somebody to do his dirty work. He's like Mr. McCormick. He won't run for an office. He won't come out here where it takes a lot more, as each and every one of you know, myself and other candidates, what it takes to really run for a public office. He's tried it and lost. If people wanted him, they would have put him in office. So don't come around and want to change how the commissioners do business, how we live our life. If you want to be a change maker, run for an office. But don't ask the people of Lackawanna County to do your dirty work. It's not going to work that way. The KOZs and profit, and I'm sorry, KOZs and nonprofits, you got to go after them. You need to go for the fees. You need to bring in money in the city. There's millions and millions of dollars out there. Don't look at liquidating the city. Look at going after the money that's owed us. You have the ice box down there. Let Paul Kelly figure out how to break the lease right now. For a dollar a year? For how many years? And we'll take over the rent down there. We'll take over the property or we'll put it out for bid and pay our bills. There are many, many ways here in the city to generate income from our assets and that's not selling them. And that's not giving away. We can't be that stupid. We can't run the meters in the city. You're paying over a hundred grand for a guy to walk around the parking garages and administer that, yet you want to have a mayor in the city and pay him peanuts to administer a ninety some million dollar a year budget. And last last week I faulted council for changing the agenda by putting motions first, changing the agenda items that we didn't get to speak on before you voted on them. I personally think, and it's been challenged in the past, that was illegal to do. Because we had the right to speak when you changed the agenda item that was on the agenda. So I think you have to revisit that, maybe make a motion to put it back where it was, then let people speak on it, and then vote on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else that would like to address council tonight? Good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher, city resident. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Loscom for providing the quantity of false alarms for last uh, calendar year. Thank you. Um, continuing where I started last week on um, the Rich Report, did you all read the Rich Report? Okay. The parking report is that what you're no I I haven't in fact I've got to request a request a copy the last copy I have, have of a rich report I believe is 2003 the last I think four was yeah. the one the previous one okay because the rich report states based on this which was a, a dialogue it appears that the on-street parking meter may be adequately staffed with four issuing tickets one collection and repair person and one on-street coordinator. Now, I'd like to make a little comparison between the parking authority and, and what we've been told about SP Plus. 
First of all, uh, in 2012, the city budgeted $562,000 for, uh, for the employees and to pay for the expenses, which is $416,000 less than the amount that Mr. Hughes estimated will be paying to SP Plus for their operating expenses. I believe the figure he used was $978,000. Uh, next, the, the 2013 budget prepared by the administration and you all increased the revenue from the parking meter violations by $300,000 over the, over the uh, 2012 budget, attributing the increase to the upgrade of meters that will take place. So that's a wash. If you put the new meters in, it doesn't matter who's, and you've got the same people uh, doing the citation issuing. Uh, so, so far the SPA is still ahead of SP Plus by $116,000, even if you give all that $300,000 to SP Plus. Uh, though one could argue that the SPA would have collected more with the new meters as well. Uh, Mr. Hughes estimated the citation revenue would increase by $1.1 million by the enhancement of the meter people and with the conversion of the meters. Since the citation issue was R, if we are to believe Mr. Valero, the former SPA people, and will be trained by the manufacturer of the new meters, according to the proposal from IPS, with the balance credited to the new meters, it's again reasonable to assume that the Scranton Parking Authority would have achieved the same increased revenue with the new equipment and training. Uh, bottom line, it's entirely possible that we could do as well or better with the prior SPA agreement than with the SP Plus agreement. The only thing SP Plus brings to the table is financing the new meters. Um, but if you put in that overwhelming $120,000 a year, uh, I think that the interest we're paying on those meters goes up quite a bit. Um, I believe that a lease of the new meters from IPS should be investigated if it has it already been. Do we know what IPS would charge to lease the meters to us instead of an outright buy? We don't know that. Because they're not, I mean, we're going to pay all that money and we're not going to have, according to uh, Mr. Valero, we're not going to have any value because they lose their value after seven years. So um, I think you really need to look. Is that going to be brought off the table tonight, by the way? No. I, you know, I think that's sort of imperative that you get that off the table because that the new meters, all this revenue is attributed to the new meters, according to all sides. So every day that your week that you put off addressing that issue is another week that the the parking me or new meters aren't put on order and are not functioning. So we're just cutting cutting the revenue for this year. Uh, finally, after reading the Rich Report, it's imperative that Mr. Washoe appear before Council to answer the many questions raised by this report. I would like to know why the Scranton Parking Authority garages offer a monthly rate of $80 to the county employees, yes, those people who spend our tax dollars, but won't give a similar break to city businesses, yes, the people who pay the taxes on their gross receipts. Whether or not they make a profit, the government gets their share of the top, off the top. Now, we know from that report, if anybody has read it, that the garages are severely underwater. I believe the valuation put on the garages was $22 million. Uh, According to the last audit report, we owe $54 million in principal and, um, and, of course, another almost a like amount in interest. And there is a big, uh, apparently, a big maintenance uh, bill coming up. I mean, in the th in the millions of dollars, not huge, but in the millions of dollars. And I'd like to know where that's coming from. Um, and if I may, I just one more thing on the other item that's tabled, which is: is there some place that I could read how it is a procedure for selecting where parking meters are placed? Is it just random? Because, I mean, for instance, somebody called to my attention the fact that in the 500 block of Jefferson, there are parking meters, and that's in front of the Amos Towers building. And so all the people there who get 
uh, either people coming in to help them clean their apartment sometimes get $20 tickets. But if you go down to the 600 block of North Washington Avenue, there are none, none at all. And um, I, I don't understand the, that differentiation. And I would think there's some kind of a procedure. And maybe you could research that and see if there's a, a, a way, some methodology that is used that could be shared with the public? Yes, that's okay. something we'll have to look into. I believe there would have to, I believe when these meters were put into place that there would have been some sort of study to well, decide where these locations would be. Well, that's what's in my head too. There, there must have been something or there must be some kind of methodology and I think that needs to be brought out and maybe changed or followed and instead of just this block yes, that block no. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Is there anyone else that would like to address council? Mrs. Craig? 5A motions. Mr. Rogan, do you have any motions or comments tonight? Yes, thank you. Um, I would also like to start off as Mr. Miller did um, to send my condolences to the family of uh, Mrs. Marinchak. She was my uh, ninth grade science teacher at West High, and she was um, she was liked by by everyone. And uh, I, I could speak for for most freshman classes. I, we weren't always the easiest to deal with, but she uh, she was always uh, very kind to everyone, and uh, she she was a great teacher, and she will be missed in in West Side. Um, next on to a few items, um, I'd like to thank. Um, Representative Kevin Haggerty and, and specifically his Chief of Staff Joe Fabricator um, for contacting me earlier in the week um, regarding a grant that Pima um, is opening up for uh, emergency generators for emergency shelters um, in the area and I did pass that along to uh, Mrs. Craig who then passed it along to um, everyone who's handling that issue so hopefully um, the city will be able to to reap the rewards of, of that grant. And once again, thanks to uh, Representative Haggerty. Um, next, I would like to comment on um, the report I received from OECD regarding the loans. Um, it's very lengthy, so I'm gonna break it down by weeks. The first week, I'm gonna start off um, positive and name all the businesses who have received a loan from OECD and that loan has been satisfied. Um, then next week, I will address the loans that are open and then uh, the week after that will be the loans that are in litigation. And just um, to get the number out there regarding the, loan, the dollar amount for what's in litigation, it is, when you add it up, it's over $2 million um, worth of loans that are, that are currently in litigation. But these are uh, this list of businesses or businesses that did receive loans um, through OECD and have fully repaid them. Um, 119 Jefferson Associates, 410 412 Spruce Street, Preferred Produce, Scranton Dunlop Incorporated, Sika's LLC, Ashcar Lackawanna Station, Backyard Ale House LLC, Electric City Television, Jay's Commons, United Neighborhood Centers, FM Restaurant, Greek Bistro, About Time Cafe, Main Street Tent Rental, and Mitchell's Restaurant. So these are some of the success stories um, where the, the loans were paid off and, and taken care of and they were, they were satisfied. So they are the success stories. And as I stated next week, I will list the, uh, the longer list of the open loans and finally, the also long list of loans that are unfortunately in litigation. <coughs> Excuse me. And the one that, that really seems to burn me and many residents the most is the infamous Molly Brannigan's loan for uh, $650,000 that still remains unsatisfied. Next, over the last weekend, I, I had a resident contact me who lives on West Mountain who had an issue, um, and just to briefly address the problem. On uh, West Mountain Road, there is significant runoff when it rains because being built on a mountain. Um, the resident who contacted me stated that the DPW um, went on there and on his land diverted some of that water that was washing down onto his property, um, which 
could cause a, a very big problem. And I went up there, and by looking at it, and I'm not obviously not an engineer, but by looking at it, all the water on this road travels on one, down one side. There are um, gutter, set, a gutter system established for that, and they were clogged with leaves, debris, bricks. And instead of addressing that situation, or if it was the sewer authority's responsibility, passing it on to them, what they did was they took a section of this resident's property, um, took a backhoe to her, a front end loader to it, pushed out a cut, and diverted all that water coming down the road onto his property. And there is no doubt that there is a, a problem with, with water on that road and something has to be done um, because you could see the road being eroded away where, where all the water is washing down and it's something that needs to be addressed. But by diverting water onto somebody's property isn't the right way to go about it. There is a police report. Um, the police report also states that the, the residents contacted DPW and the DPW um, informed them that the city would not correct the problem that they caused on February 13th when they plowed um, the ditch into onto their property. Now, they, they also showed the concern for the black drainage pipes on the other side of the roadway that seems to be the, the issue that should have been addressed because it's overflowing going onto the other side of the road. Um, this is just another one of these issues where it seems that things were done without thinking them through and this is another issue that may resolve may end up in, in the courts as a lawsuit because the property owner obviously doesn't want all the runoff from a road traveling onto his property and when I spoke to him he, he mentioned that that it may wind up uh, in litigation and we surely hope that doesn't happen so Mrs. Craig can we please send this to the DPW and ask if they could reach out to the residents. They know who they are. Um, they've contacted the DPW numerous times on this issue and see if this could be worked out without it getting into litigation where it's gonna cost the taxpayers more money. I also have a few more requests. Um, please send a request to the proper city departments asking the status of the Rockwell Avenue Bridge. Um, some residents called today asking for the status of this project. Um, and I did look up in the Scranton Times, there was an older article regarding this, and it mentioned about PennDOT being involved, but PennDOT is only overseeing the safety. They're not actually, it's not actually a PennDOT project um, from speaking to them. So this is, um, you know, a project that I know the residents of North Scranton are, have been waiting a long time for, for this to be complete. Um, next, another request to DPW that Dewey Avenue behind Lackawanna Little League is plowed when it snows. Residents have contacted me and, and stated that they, they plow all around, but not on Dewey Avenue. Um, also to DPW, a request that Pike Street is paved um, with the grant money that was recently announced that the city will be receiving. And this, unlike the, the funds that are, are used yearly for paving, this, these funds are not limited to low to moderate income areas. They can be used anywhere throughout the city. And I know I, from being up at Pike Street, I know Mr. Loscombe was up there as well. And um, I believe Mr. Lockwood from the Times, it might have been that the previous reporter was up there um, with me. We, we, we looked at it and it's, the road is in terrible condition. So hopefully that could be placed on, on the list um, for the, the grant funds. And finally, another request to uh, licensing and inspections, um, asking if there's a date set for rooming house um, inspections in Pinebrook. And also, they want to know, um, some people brought up the question about the outsourcing of certain inspec inspections within the city. And they'd like to know what is currently done in-house and what is currently outsourced. And that's definitely something I think um, all of council should be informed about and, and the citizens as well. So that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogan. Mr. Loscombe, do you have any motions or comments? Yeah, thank you. Just. Uh just to echo uh, Mr. Rogan and Mr. Miller, I too would like to send my condolences to the Marinchak family. Uh, although I'm not as young as Pat, I wasn't a student of Diane's, but uh, I've known Diane for many, many years, and, and it is heartbreaking. Uh, her husband George was a colleague of mine for many years on the fire department. And keep the whole family in your prayers, because uh, this last year has been, has been a tough one on the whole family. Uh, Diane and George have raised a special needs child through all the years, but um, she lost two brother-in-laws uh, very young in this past year, too. 
So it's, it's been a tragedy for the family, and, and I would like you to keep, keep the whole family in your prayers and, and give them your strength. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Loscom. Good evening. I would just like to begin by addressing um, a few issues, but before I do that, I would also like to send my condolences to the Marinchak family, and I would ask that you keep them in your prayers over the upcoming weeks. Um, secondly, tonight, there was an article in the Scranton Times, as everyone knows, regarding um, the parking garages and the SPA. And that the SPA, or that the parking garages, rather, aren't performing up to par according to standard parking's estimates. Basically, here's how it goes. The SPA has to pay $3.4 million worth of bond payments. The city budgeted $1.9 million to assist in those payments. That leaves $1.5 million left. According to um, the figures in the newspaper based on four months of standard parking data, it looks like we're only going to come out to $1.2 million, which would be leaving the, the city, or the authority rather, $300,000 short with the additional $1.9 million that the city budgeted. Now, with this in mind, I'd like to know what standard parking plans on doing to meet the revenue projections that they originally provided. So Mrs. Craig, if we could please uh, send a letter to John Rogers from standard parking and ask him the steps that standard plans on taking to address the parking garages and what they intend to do to increase revenue. It's very important that revenue is increased so we don't go over that $1.9 million amount. Secondly, there's been a lot of uh, talk tonight about nonprofits, and I know that Mr. Spiraglia said that we need to put more of an emphasis um, on Harrisburg. And I can't agree with him more. Basically, there's a lot of good ideas for revenue uh, that people bring to the podium, that other council members think of, that the administration thinks of. However, the Local Tax Enabling Act, which is Pennsylvania law, prohibits a lot of what these ideas would bring to us. Basically, it, it sets restrictions on what the city, of, the city of Scranton as a Class 2A city can and cannot do. With this in mind, I think that a public safety fee is something that we should definitely look into as far as the nonprofits are concerned because I, I know that the University of Scranton and Marywood do have a um, security force. However, there, is, there are still instances where the Scranton police is called out and also the fire department is called out. And the fire department is a service that the taxpayers of Scranton provide for. So with this in mind, I'd like to construct a letter, or letters, to Representative Flynn, Haggerty, and Senator Blake, asking if they would support fighting for a public safety fee for nonprofit organizations, because they do use our services. And in a city such as the size of Scranton, um, we have a lot of nonprofit institutions here. And I know that some nonprofit institutions are contributing to the city in the form of pilots. However, we have to get more out of the nonprofits because the taxpayers are constantly getting slammed. And it's not right. <clears throat> Other than that, I do have. Um, 
just two requests for the night, two citizens' requests. Uh, there's a stop sign knocked down at the corner of Rockwell Avenue and Charles Street in North Scranton. Um, no one's been out to fix it. So, Mrs. Craig, if we could please contact um, Mr. Dewar, or Director Dewar, and ask him to have the stop sign repaired. And a uh, second request about the property at 1346 Sanderson Avenue. Uh, it's in very poor shape. Um, in 2011, the uh, person who, uh, or a, a person contacted the city about the property, spoke to one of the inspectors, however, nothing was done. However, uh, to this day, there's been no progress, and it's 2013. So, Mrs. Craig, if we could please contact Director Seitzinger and ask him to handle this situation in the best way he sees fit. And that's all for tonight. Mr. Joyce, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, and I, I do see a stack here that Mr. Dewar, um, he did reply, and um, I, do like to, I would like to thank him for sending responses on these and a lot of times we we especially myself we're always complaining that for a lack of response but I do like to, I would like to thank him for a response on these and hopefully these requests will be taken care of and thank you 5b establishing a no parking zone along the easterly side of Wyoming Avenue State Route 3025 from segment 30 offset 2190 to segment 30 offset 2410 and along the southerly curb line of large street 175 feet east from its intersection with wyoming avenue to allow for safe site distances for a proposed mcdonald's restaurant at wyoming avenue and large street at this time i'll entertain a motion that item 5b be introduced into its proper committee so moved second on the question all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, no business at this time. Seventh order, no business at this time. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>